So everybody's talking about net zero at COP26. Countries and companies are making declarations that they're going to be net zero by 2035 or 2050 or whenever. And a lot of environmentalists and activists are saying, isn't net zero all a bit of a accounting trick? A way of making things a bit vague and complicated so that we can get out of actually doing anything in the short term. As somebody who's been called the physicist behind net zero, I feel pretty strongly about this because vague and unnecessarily complicated are the worst insults you could throw at a physicist. So when we came up with these ideas, the idea of a finite carbon budget and the need for net zero emissions 15 years ago, it was a simplification. To stop carbon dioxide from causing global warming, you had to take one ton of carbon dioxide actively back out of the atmosphere for every ton released. That was it. That was what it would take. But then as the idea got out there and as the idea of net zero caught on, everybody piled in, everybody wanted a piece of net zero and it all started to get a bit murkier. And it's become for many people to be a bit of an accounting trick, a, a sort of an idea of, oh, you can plant some trees to offset your fossil fuel use and stop worrying about global warming. So we have to change this. Yes, we need to plant trees, we need to restore the biosphere, but we have to also recognize that the most we can do the most we can expect nature to do for us might be to shave a tenth of a degree off global temperatures by 2050, more by the end of the century. Right now, carbon dioxide from fossil fuel use is driving up global temperatures by two tenths of a degree per decade. That's what has to stop. And in the long term, the only way to stop it is to dispose safely and permanently of carbon dioxide and not just dump it into the atmosphere. So in the long term, the only net zero that matters is what applies at the Earth's crust. Carbon that comes out of the Earth's crust in the form of fossil fuels needs to be balanced by the corresponding amount of carbon dioxide being put back into the Earth's crust and stored away safely and permanently so it doesn't end up in the atmosphere for thousands of years. The only way to do this is to capture the carbon dioxide, compress it and re-inject it back underground. Right now, we do this for less than 0.1% of the carbon dioxide we generate by burning fossil fuels. That number has to be at 100% by 2050 for us to have a durable net zero, and nobody's even talking about it. Nobody at COP is even talking about this statistic because if you required the fossil fuel industry to get rid of the carbon dioxide generated by the products they sell, it would make fossil fuels more expensive. That's the sort of embarrassing truth that they don't want to talk about. But we, we could, if, if, the, if the company selling you water uh, were to dump your sewage in the river, well, that would cut your water bills, but nobody wants them to do that. And it doesn't, it doesn't work the company saying, well, the water was perfectly clean when we sold it to you. Um, you know, just as it doesn't make sense for a fossil fuel company to say, well, you know, the petrol wasn't causing any global warming until you went and burnt it. So we have to establish the principle that if you make money by selling products that cause global warming, it's up to you, the company selling those products, to dispose of the carbon dioxide they generate. This is a policy that the politicians at COP26 could enact tomorrow, and it would solve global warming within a generation. But they're not even talking about it.